Okay. But yeah, so we had talked about doing um, like weekly calls at least for maybe like the first month or so just to help everybody get going. And like, you know, each week we're going to be going through different things. And, and the, the interesting thing about this program is um, as coaches, we're going through this new as well. Um, you know, since everything was released to coaches and customers at the same time. And so we don't really have a heads up on any of this. So we're kind of brand new with you guys. So I definitely think that doing weekly calls will help. Um, so stay on the lookout for that and like keep checking the, the events tabs and stuff. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna share the screen just cause I kind of wanna show you guys just through, okay, where is my Facebook on here? We're good to go. Okay. So I just kind of want to show you guys um, just in the group, just to start, like where everything is, how to find things. Mine's going to look a little bit differently because I'm an admin. So like this featured, the best of your group post isn't going to be here, but at the very top, you're going to find a couple posts that are pinned. One of them is the added sugar post. Um, Cause that's super important. We're supposed to keep between or below 10 grams of added sugar for each day. And so this just, walks you through exactly what is in each thing. So that way we know. So you usually drink hydrate. Hydrate is a tough one with this um, because it is a specific, it does serve a specific purpose, but unfortunately it doesn't fit into this program very well. But once the four weeks are done, if you do want to add it back in, you can always do that. Um, and then you can also find this helpful tips post. And so I'm gonna be updating this Google doc as we go. But if you click on this Google doc, let me know if you guys can see it or if it's gonna stay on my Facebook page. Can you guys see the doc? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna be updating this as you guys have more questions and as things come up and as we go through this together, because I know a lot more is going to come up, um, but it's basically just step-by-step -step, like different ways to help set yourself up for success. So it's pretty obvious, watch the videos in the back, um, in, in the on bod and check into the group. Um, Autumn has also been sharing some amazing things on her Instagram. And so, and she has a gut, a gut protocol um, highlight on her page. So if you go to her bio, you'll be able to see that. And it's all of her stories that have her gut protocol stories that she's saving there. Um, one of the things I really recommend is writing down why you want to start this, because like any program, you're going to have up, down, up days and down days, and there are going to be days where you just don't feel like doing it. And so it's really important to have that, to be able to look back on and remember, why are you doing this? What are the things that made you interested in doing this? What are the, how do you want to feel because of this? And what do you want your goals from this program? Um, it is going to be equal parts of planning and mindset. Um, if you go into it, thinking like I see this a lot with with in mostly other groups not with our group thankfully but I see a lot of like what about it and so it's like well what about this well, what about this and this is really a program there are programs where you can what about them and you can still get great results and you what abouting them actually helps you and helps you stick to them long term this is a group where there's really no what about it and it is is it on the plan yes or no and it's pretty black and white which also makes it easier too because it really takes the guesswork out of it so um, to get the best results, it's unfortunately because of that, it's also the type of program where because of the way it, it is structured, you really need those four weeks to be able to get the best results. You need those four weeks where you are 100% on or as on as you can be um, because you do need to have the four weeks of the foods removed from your system to then be able to slowly add them back in to really be able to see how your body reacts. So instead of like a normal program for doing 21 day fix, if you have an off day or an off meal, you can just pick back up where you left off with this one. If you get too far off track, especially into the program, a couple weeks into it, you might have to start all the way back at day one again. So I just want you to keep that in mind and kind of go into it with that mentality. Like it's four weeks. I can do anything for four weeks. There's never a perfect time to do any program. There are always holidays, trips, um, events, things going on. And so it's really, really important just to really go into it with that mindset that like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to plan for it. I'm going to do the best I can. And you've got the group for support. We're all going through it. You're going to have bad days. You're going to hate it. Some days you're going to want to quit. And at the end of the four weeks, we're going to be so happy that you didn't. Um, if you have not yet, take your before pictures. Everybody wants to fight me on this all the time, but I promise, promise, promise you, you'll be so happy that you did um, at the end of this program. 
uh, especially like when I was going through 80 day obsession, I was in the test group and there were days where I felt like the scale wasn't moving and I wasn't seeing results. And those pictures literally save your sanity. You don't have to show anybody. You don't have to post them in the group. You don't have to share any of your weight measurements, nothing, but please make sure you do it. Um, so in this week one, this, these are just kind of like little expectations. Your week one is going to be messy. It doesn't mean that you're not doing it right. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong. It's new. And so it's going to be messy for all of us. Um, a lot of us too, even if you've done portion fix, the red A and the red B and the yellow A and the yellow B and adding the fermented foods and then the food list being smaller, like it's new to all of us. So it, your first week is going to be messy. It's totally okay. And just do what you can. Um, in one of the videos, she kind of message mentions it really quickly. So I want to just be sure that you guys know as well. Um, raw veggies are supposed to be avoided for the first week. Even if you've been eating veggies in the past that are raw, um, she still wants you to cook them for the first week because they are easier to digest. After the second week, that's when you can start adding them in um, cooked again. So in the first week too, if you guys, some of you are already into the first week, you may know that like at first you don't feel as, like you may feel amazing a couple of days in and you may not, you may feel more bloated. You may feel more tired. Your body may be going through detox. Your body may be getting rid of um, caffeine and sugar and all of that. And so you may feel like you were run over by a truck. Totally normal. If you've ever done the ultimate reset, you know that like day three, day four is kind of the same. And then you get over that hump and then you feel great. So just things to expect. Again, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. I know we don't have the booklets. Um, that is probably the most um, requested thing in all of my coach groups. So until they come out with booklets, I think they're going to. I can't imagine that they won't because it's been requested so much. But until they do, um, don't go and print everything because you're just going to be wasting so much paper and you're going to have a lot of information that you don't need. Um, what I would print are the food lists so you can keep them in your kitchen um, so that way you can reference them easily. And then some sort of tracker sheet. So the, the program itself has the daily journal pages, which have um, the food trackers for the day. It also has... Uh, where you can track your, your mood and your sleep and things like that. Um, you can use the old school 21 day fix tracker sheets. And I put the link there for those. Uh, and then I also created a Google spreadsheet and then, and PJ helped adjust the settings. So it automatically adds everything up. And so I'll open that in just a second and show you guys how to do that. And so that's actually been helping me try to figure out my meal planning as well. Um, so for your su supplements, the best thing I can recommend is to set a repeating alarm on your phone. That way you don't forget them. If you do forget them, just take them whenever you remember. Um, not a big deal, but to get the best benefits out of them, you do want to take the Optimize, which is the digestive enzyme, 20 minutes before each meal. And then uh, the Revitalize in the morning. The Revitalize is the probiotic, so anytime in the morning. Um, and then again, Energize is allowed, but because of the... Uh, both sugar count and the caffeine count, those are just things to keep in mind because you do have limited counts on those. Um, collagen is allowed, uh, power greens are allowed, and they count as a green, I believe, on this. Um, and then it's the beach bars and the bevy that are not allowed, and that's because of the corn fiber and the processing with those. those. And then also anything with dairy. So like the Shakeology has to be vegan, um, recover, if you're using recover, it has to be vegan and then recharge, you're not allowed to use because it has dairy. So the 30 plants a week, it is, oh, let me fix my typo here. Um, the 30 plants a week, it sounds scary, but once you realize like what she can count as plants, it's not that bad. So plants are basically anything that's not animal product. So even oats count as plants, um, oats, millet, um, trying to think of what else. I have a list I can share with you guys. There was a typo in it, so I wanna pretty that up and then I can share it, but it's basically almost your entire yellow list, your entire green list, your entire purple list. So it's not just vegetables. And then different colors of different plants also count. So if you have say like bell peppers and you have a red and you have a green, those are gonna count as different plants because they have different nutrients. So that definitely helps with the 30 plant count. And you don't need a full serving. Um, and it can also be um, herbs count as well. So if you just put, like if you make the tabbouleh and it has parsley and mint, parsley and mint are also gonna count as two of your, your plants for the week. And then the goal is to get as much of a variety as possible. 
Um, and then from week to week. So like week one, you don't want your 30 plants to look exactly the same as week two. Um, okay, so here I just added some of the, the added sugars. I'll come back to the, um, the meal planning in a minute, but here I just added some of the added sugars. So that way it's just handy for you. Something to keep in mind, and I requested that they, they update this. Um, we have the list and it's in the, the group, in the Facebook group. We have the list of um, portion fix recipes that are gut protocol approved. They did, they, they adjusted the container count for it. So it will say if it's like a, um, a yellow A or a yellow B or a red A or a yellow B. But what they didn't do is they didn't add how many grams of added sugar. So some of them do have maple syrup or honey in them, which is allowed, but you would just need to do the calculation for the added sugar. I have requested that they add those. I hope that they do because I think it's super important. Um, or something that I'm doing, um, I'm making the red lentil chili as soon as I go and buy red lentils. And that one has maple syrup in it. And honestly, I don't feel like doing the conversion. Like it's, it's simple. It's three teaspoons is one tablespoon. And then I would just figure out how many teaspoons are in the whole um, recipe and then divide it by the number of servings. I don't even feel like doing that. And I don't think I'll notice if I just don't put the maple syrup in the recipes. I'm just going to skip the maple syrup. Like I'm literally going into this thinking, how, how can I make this easier on myself? So <laughs> that's an option too. Uh, fermented food three times a week. Um, those are, you know, the kimchi, miso, sauerkraut. For the sauerkraut, it's not like a traditional like canned sauerkraut. It's going to be the, the um, sauerkraut that specifically has probiotic on it. So it's a little bit different. So be sure to look for that. Um, kombucha is allowed but only a couple times a week. Um, coconut yogurt too. But you have to watch like the sugars that are added and make sure that it is probiotic. Um, and then the fix eight fermented blueberries. I know a couple of you guys are just starting to make those this week. So I'm really excited to see how they turn out. Um, and then also if you have an instant pot, uh, you have a yogurt feature. You, you might most, you might have a yogurt feature on your instant pot. Um, I'm not sure how Pinteresty I wanna get with this yet. I might try to make it. I might just buy yogurt if I do yogurt. Uh, so red meat, red meat, coffee and caffeine are all interesting. Um, Red meat, we're allowed up to once a week. For ideal results, don't add it at all. Um, same thing with coffee. Coffee is very acidic and it causes a lot of people digestive problems. Um, and, and Autumn talks about how reliant people are and dependent people are on coffee. And so she does allow it three cups, three eight ounce cups per week. That is even if it's decaf, decaf doesn't count as nothing. Um, you can do decaf tea, but not decaf coffee. Um, and that's why. And then as far as the caffeine, the caffeine affects our adrenal glands and your adrenal glands affect your energy levels. And so we are allowed up to 200 milligrams a day. Um, and then that's also including like Energize would be included in that, matcha, and then the coffee that we are allowed. So for everything is gluten-free because that's one of the six foods that we are eliminating. For the bread, there is no gluten-free bread that is available in a store. Um, she says the only one that is allowed is the fixate recipe, but she says to make sure that you check the, um, the serving sizes because you might only be able to have one slice of bread because of how many of the yellows that you're allowed to have for that. So I think it's Alana has like a, a happy or an open face is a happy face, I think is like one of her sayings. So just keep that in mind. For the oats, oats are naturally gluten-free. But because of the processing um, that, hap that occurs, there is a lot of cross-contamination with oats. So oats, even though they are an, a naturally gluten-free product, they typically aren't gluten-free when you purchase them in the store. So you just have to make sure to look for um, oats that specifically say gluten-free. And then same thing with pasta. When you're getting, if you're doing pasta, you can do gluten-free pasta. Just make sure you read the ingredients really well. And that way you can, um, you can, make sure that the, the products are, you know, there isn't like extra junk because they throw, you'd be amazed how, how much like gluten-free products have extra stuff added in. So I'm gonna come back to the Google spreadsheet in one second. I just wanna show you guys, oh, where did it go? Okay, so in this group, um, so those posts can both be found just in this featured posts section up here. 
but we also have this right here. It's the guides. And in the guides, this has a ton of information. So the first guide is just all of the posts that we have so far. This is the phone number so you can get the, the texts from Autumn. Um, there's our prep week calendar. There's a quick video on how to find recipes. And then each of our prep week videos. And then this one, Becky added all of these documents here. So these are all the gut protocol documents. And then our added sugars chart is in there as well. So this is in the guides. And as, as any new information comes out that we want you to be able to um, keep handy and not have to go back and look in the entire group, that's where you can find that. So for the, here it is, for um, the meal planning, this is in the helpful tips guide. This link right here is going to bring you to a blank version of this. So I am going to be in plan B. I, when I calculate on A, I will not survive on A. Um, I know this from experience, I'm bumping up to B. And these are the calculations that I get over here for each container. And then this way, and I, as I was going over this and I'm like, okay, so we're not supposed to cook our vegetables for the first week. I was like, shoot, I have salad on my first week. So I have to figure out what to do with my salad and bump that a week and redo this. But I also need to redo it anyways because my red lentil chili is not gonna be ready tomorrow because I don't have the lentils. But so what I'm doing here is um, I'm just entering my food. And then, so like, I'll come down here where I don't have anything posted in. So I would just write, like I'm do, if I do Shakeology, spinach, fruit, this is gonna be one green. So then it automatically deducts it from the bottom. So I know I have five left. So it's one green, one fruit, and one um, of these red bees. And then it takes it right off of here. So Julie, hmm? we probably, but first week we shouldn't be doing spinach in the shake, right? Sorry, because what was that? The first week we shouldn't be doing spinach in the shake, right? Right, right. Yeah. I so I realized after I had already gone through and planned all this. Yeah. It, or you could do spinach, but you could do it cooked or steamed. So everything needs to be, and it again, it's as well as you can. Um, but yeah, yeah, you would want you would want cooked. Um, I know some people are doing cooked zucchini on their shakes. I haven't tried that yet, but I've heard it's really good. Um, I have an air fryer, so that makes things really easy because I can literally just air fry everything. And then that way I don't have to worry about it. And I could just do my, sh my shakeology with spinach or with fruit and water and be totally fine with that. I found it really um, helpful to make a bunch of cooked side like vegetables and then just kind of add them to like if I was having shakeology and fruit, I'd add a pile of roasted broccoli or I'd add a pile of, what did I else? I did shaved Brussels sprouts as well so yeah so I, I've got that on here so what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to find like a couple recipes that I want to make for the week so this week I decided the red lentil chilies uh, chili and sweet uh, red lentil chili um, the mango chicken which is amazing and the cauliflower oh my gosh my typos everywhere the cauliflower tabbouleh and then I'm doing um, the green bean and potato salad and so I found those recipes, put those in, and then I put my Shakeology in. And then from there, you can kind of see what you have left. And so that's been the easiest for me is to kind of build your, build your meals, find your recipes, find the big things first, um, plug those into this as the calculation. And then from there, add things in and fill things in. And again, your first week is going to be messy. Like you're going to have really random food containers left over. So you know, if you're just like eating green beans out of a green container, like don't be surprised. Um, so what I did from there too is, so the red lentil chili is what I'm making. So then I was like, well, I can also do sweet potatoes and eggs with that. And then I just entered that in for the meal or with the mango chicken, the mango chicken, hey, the mango chicken is really good with broccoli and rice. And so I was like, I'm going to do the mango chicken, broccoli and rice, put all of that in. And then like here, I just have random zucchini. So that's just going to be air fried zucchini um, and just kind of filling things in that way. If you guys are doing this with your husbands or boyfriends or friends or anything where you are cooking more than one meal and you are in different categories, um, we're gonna, I'm learning as we go, because like I said, tomorrow is my day one. This is what I'm doing so far. And I'm hoping that it 
works and makes it the easiest. Um, I think the, the actual planning of like portion sizes is gonna be different, difficult. But so in here, so I have at the bottom, it's week one, me. I have week one, Mike. Instead of putting all of Mike's stuff at the top, I'm just putting what he has extra. So that way I don't have to copy my entire meal and all of this. I just know like he's gonna eat exactly what I'm eating. He has no choice. I'm just putting food in front of him. So he's gonna be eating exactly what I eat. And then I know that he, you know, that he's gonna get double chicken and double broccoli at dinner. He's gonna get double sweet potato at lunch and he's gonna get a half a fruit for, um, for breakfast. And he still has another green, another red, and then another yellow and another teaspoon. <laughs> so that's how I'm doing that to try to help plan that. Um, and then like BJ said, another really great thing, I think they call it buffet, cause it's kind of like batch cooking, but I think they're calling it like buffet cooking now, which like, I love the concept of it. And so basically you could go through and just find like foods that you like. So find a couple things on the green list, on both red lists and both on both yellow lists and batch cook those. So you're gonna cook up say like a bunch of quinoa, a bunch of sweet potatoes, a bunch of green beans, um, you know, a bunch of chicken. And instead of putting them all together and like meal prepping, like old school meal prepping where every single meal is the same exact thing, you can put them together differently and make different combinations out of those to kind of make different meals and keep things different. Um, you can add different herbs to them and different vegetables. And so like one day you could do like quinoa, sweet potatoes and green beans. And one day you could do, you know, something with eggs and the sweet potatoes one day you could do like chicken and quinoa and so you could mix and match that way so I hope that helps try to like you know plan your meals a little bit better and don't feel like I'm not a planner at all especially with meal planning so don't feel like you need to go through and have your whole entire week planned out perfect um figure out what works for you so if you are a planner and you want your entire week planned out then go for it if you just want to batch cook and have everything ready to throw together and just throw in a bowl, then do that. But it's really, really about finding what works for you. I'm going to stop this share. Can I, can I add to that, Julie? Absolutely. Yeah, that um, I'm, I'm not huge on having every single thing planned out. That's just so confining for me as well. But I will make a point to tell you that if you don't have something planned out, you're going to struggle because you need to eat a lot. There's a lot that needs to be eaten by the end of the day. And if you're at noon sitting around like, what do I have for lunch? Because I don't know what I'm eating for dinner. I don't know which holes to fill. You're gonna wind up in a really hard position and um, do a little work, do, do, do some work. You don't have to plan everything, but plan your big meals because you'll thank yourself for it in the end. Come on, Maddie. Yeah, you'll end up making things so much easier on your life. And then same thing with your workouts. Plan your workouts, plan when you're scheduling those. I know there have been a lot of questions about the workouts and people wanting to swap and change and move things around. You guys are gonna get so sick of me hearing of hearing me say this, but trust the process, trust the program. Autumn talks a lot about how um, high intensity workouts and doing high intensity workouts for a long time um, affect your gut health and how important it is to do the low intensity workouts. Um, she, you know, so the workouts have four, there are four workouts a week. They're about 30 minutes each. And then she has one day where you can add in anything you want. And it's basically listen to your body, see how you feel. And then add in from that. Um, low intensity, intensity does not mean that you're not gonna be getting a good workout. It's still autumn. You know that she's gonna creep up on you and kick your butt <laughs> because that's what she does. Um, and I think that's one of the, the most important things too is like she knows what she's doing. And, and I think if you know if she hasn't been able to prove that by now, like with, with 21 day fix and 80 obsession and everything else, like her programs work, they work really well. And so it's just one of those things, just like plugging in. We have everything laid out in front of us and we don't even have to think about it. It's just go in and you know, just follow it follow the program and trust the process. Did you guys have any other questions or things, comments, things to add? Um, is it possible for you to take this question to the magic group? <laughs> yeah. Um, is cacao allowed? Not cocoa, but cacao. Yeah. They're under the 
I think they're under. I haven't studied the whole list hundred percent, but. Oh yeah, no, yeah, they're oh. on the list. Um, okay. Cause so I was like, there's like, you know, coffee replacement, like cacao, um, people do like that as a morning coffee replacement drink and end up loving it so much that they just switch to it. So I'm like, I'm going to well, give that so a shot. Cacao nibs are on here. Let me see which okay. food list they're under. I don't know if they're under a treat. I want to say they might be blue. I guess I'm thinking more of like cacao powder to make. I haven't seen it as the powder and everybody's freaking out about the coffee and trying to like find ways to replace it. Oh, and I don't, I'm not a coffee with, drinker, but. <laughs> yeah, and she's coming up with all kinds of solutions. If that hasn't come up yet, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's not allowed. Okay. Um, okay, where is it? I know it's on here. I just saw it. I just figured it might, cause it does have a lot of really good um, gut healing properties with it as well. So anyways, no need to search it right now, but we, um, yeah, it's definitely on one of the lists. I know that because I've seen it. I just saw it today. It's a teaspoon. Too. I just, yeah, I, I just had to scroll it three times. Kind of it's a teaspoon. Oh, is that where it is? Of course. The one thing that I was like, Oh, it wouldn't be under there. Yeah, so that counts as the teaspoon. So I'm wondering if, okay. I mean, I'm wondering if you could just take the cacao nibs and use those as like a teaspoon, but somehow, I don't know, mm. melt it down. Yeah. And that might work. Well, if I find a magic coffee replacement, I'll share it with y'all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because the thing with that too, is you can't add, like you're really limited on the sweeteners that you're adding as well. Yeah. I've been doing chaga mushroom powder, which is just pure mushroom powdered in it. When you dissolve it um, in hot water and add like almond milk or something, it's, it's delicious and coffee-like and it's just pure vegetable. So I think that should, I don't see why that would be not approved, but. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask about the mushroom coffee because I see that I'm sister is doing that. Oh, but this isn't like there's a difference some of the mushroom coffees are actually blended mushroom with coffee so you'll just have to make sure you read the ingredients so the, what i'm doing is pure chaga powder or lion's mane powder it's not doesn't have any coffee in it yeah that's good too to remember to, to look at the ingredients i think i have one from um is it sig For yeah sig you know which brand i'm talking about and but it has instant coffee in it right Okay, uh, what about intermittent fasting? You can definitely do intermittent fasting with this. Um, and Julia said, just to confirm, if a food is not on the list, it's a no, right? That's my understanding, but just confirming. For the most part, yeah. For the most part, if it's not on the list, there's a reason it's not on the list. Um, I haven't heard anything that, because I, I've been hearing a lot of the, what about this, what about this? And so far, zero of the what about this is that have been asked have been added to the list. Um, so there is a reason why things are on the list and they're not. And I think the thing to remember with this program too is it's it's not like it's not like 21 day fix or 80 day obsession where you want it to become a lifestyle and you like keep doing it. This is a very specific program where you do it for four weeks. And then from there you can figure out like what you can add in and what you can take away. Um, but like it it is kind of a different mindset than the other programs where it is like it's a strict four weeks. You're going to become very conscious of um, how quickly you're aware that something you ate is not right for you. I mean, like as far as a vegetable, like all of a sudden you're far gassier than you wanted to be today. Maybe you shouldn't have had that cauliflower, broccoli, X, Y, Z. I mean, you're going to notice very quickly. Um, you know, there was a day or two where I definitely went over in my 10 grams and for a quick the next morning, my boyfriend wondered, he's like, why aren't you getting up? I was like, I don't know, I'm tired, leave me alone. And he's like, yesterday you sprung out of bed, bright as, you know, as, and I was laying there, I'm like, why am I so tired? Because I went over in my sugar the night before. So, I mean, you very quickly catch on to um, what's bothering you. And that was some, something from the test group too. Um, everybody was saying that 
they felt so good that during the reintroduction, they really didn't want to add anything in. They were just happy where they were and it was easier to stick with. And so they did add some things in, but they, they weren't like, they didn't get to the four weeks. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I've like, I haven't eaten this night. And, and <clears throat> excuse me. And then another thing, um, I keep seeing people who are nervous to do this because they think that they're sensitive to certain foods and they just don't want to know. And I want to tell you with that as well, you're going to find out that you're sensitive to certain foods, but then you can do with that information what you want. So if you do want to not eat it again, don't eat it again. If you want to use it as a special treat, use it as a special treat, but you just, you just have that knowledge. And I think that's the most important thing is you're going forward with the knowledge after this program that like, okay, when I eat this, this is how I feel. And then it's yours to do with, with what you want. Um, I saw a post of a, it was a woman sharing her husband's results and <clears throat> he had lost, I think 11 pounds in the first two weeks. Like guys are going to kill this. Like, I'm going to be so annoyed when Mike does this. Um, cause he's going to drop weight like crazy. Um, but he had lost, I think, 11 pounds in two weeks and found out that his sensitivity was eggs. And I know that that's one of Autumn's big sensitive sensitivities too. So it's not omitted on the list, but it's one of the foods that it's like, it's on the list, but, um, and so he found out that was his thing and he absolutely loves eggs, but he was like, I feel so good that I don't even care. I don't want to eat them. It doesn't even matter to me anymore. Like if you had asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, I'm never giving up eggs. He's like, now I have no desire to eat them because I feel so good. So I think we're going to have a lot of that. And I'm really excited to see everybody's results, honestly, because I think we're going to be blown away. I think it's, I think it's the, the things I keep hearing from the test group are people are getting results that they didn't think they, that they didn't expect it. Um, people are not really feeling like they need this that much. And then they do it and they're like, oh my God, like I, I needed this and I didn't even realize it. And so I think we're really going to be blown away by this. I've had a good two, two first weeks to start. I'm down six pounds and like can already very, very much so tell in wearing my clothing, not necessarily what I see, but like, you know, I bought a pair of sweatpants over Christmas and I was annoyed because they were too tight around my thighs. So I wouldn't wear them, put them on last week and they were comfortable. <laughs> they were sweatpants, how they're supposed to be loose and baggy. <laughs> you have to show us Hank. I can hear him whining in the back. Oh, do I? I have to put him in his crate because he's being an animal. You have to show everybody how cute he is, though. Oh, he's upside down. Thank. Oh, you have to share a picture in the group because it's too dark in there to see. Monster. He's adorable. But yeah, and I have a friend who's doing it, and she messaged me just before she bought it, she messaged me like literally five messages about how crappy she's been feeling and, and this and that, and how like, like her energy should be better than it is. And she's like, I fart too much for people who, for somebody who eats this healthy. And she was going on and on and on. And then she's like, but I don't want to give up my coffee. I was like, you just told me all these things. I'm like, what do you want? Do you want to feel better? Or do you want coffee? And she's like, damn it, Julie, I want to feel better. I'm like, there you go. There you go might not you might not miss your coffee as much as you think you do or as as much as you think you will and again you can always go back to it i think that was all i had for questions um let me just double check in the group real quick to see if any more were added but if anybody has any more Um, oh yeah, the zucchini thing. I don't know why they didn't just put, okay, for some reason there was a question, but it was only showing up from my phone. It was popping up in my notifications. Um, I don't know why they didn't just put zucchini on the list, but zucchini is included. It's just one of the squashes. I thought it was yeah, so funny because I'm like, I know what zucchini is. Squash. <laughs> like, it's not on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know why. Squash, maybe to uh, save room or something. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I was just like, I need my zucchini. I do not have coffee, but I need zucchini. <laughs> and now that I have the air fryer, seriously, I got that at the best time ever. Like, I'm going to air fry everything. I haven't air fried zucchini yet, so you have to tell me if it comes out good. It's really good. It's, um, yeah. it takes a little bit longer for some reason. Um, but yeah, I, I just use a mandolin 
slice it up. When I'm not doing this, I put, um, I just spray a little bit of oil on it. And then I, I like it with Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to like being forced to give up dairy again. Cause I know that's one of my triggers. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's really good in there. Um, broccoli is really good. Broccoli. You just have to be careful because it like, it's like an avocado where it's like, not yet, not yet, not yet too late. <laughs> so broccoli, you really have to watch in there. Um, cauliflower is really good in there. I have some fun. I, I have to figure out how to gut protocol it. Um, but I have a recipe from years ago and it's basically like Bragg's tahini water, and then just like some spices and you, you mix it up into a paste and you can roast, um, cauliflower and fennel with it and like pour it on that. And that's really good. Um, so I'm going to, once I go grocery shopping and get my red lentils, I'll go pick up some fennel and, and try to gut protocol eyes that for you guys too. Um, and then the other question was, um, this is the one that popped up that for some reason it's not showing up on my computer, but it shows up on my phone was the three, eight ounce cups of coffee per week. Can we have a half a cup, cup of coffee every day? I, do, I don't know. Um, what I've been hearing is it's just the three times. So I haven't had anybody ask if they can split it. Um, I can find out about that though, but again, it's, it, it's a food that's very acidic and causes a lot of digestive problems. So if you could, I think you would feel really good if you just got rid of it completely. Um, but again, that's totally up to you, but I'll see if I can find out about that. I do know that Energize is allowed daily. So people have just been kind of like substituting their Energize instead. Do you guys have any questions? All right, if not, I will let you guys go. I'm so glad you guys were able to hop on, especially on a Sunday night. I know everybody's busy. Um, like I mentioned to Melanie at the beginning, um, we are talking about doing these um, weekly, at least for a little bit, especially because we're all kind of new and going through this together and we're going to be stumbling through it together, but we're going to do it. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Uh, real quick, who has a, somebody doing this with them? Like a husband, boyfriend? Nice. How are they doing? Or how are you, like, what are you doing to plan for that? My sister's doing it, but she, she, I think is going to start this week. And since I don't, I don't have to do anything for her, she's just doing it with me. So, okay. so that's kind of like a good one. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I know. I think we have a couple more couples that are starting it tomorrow. So I think that's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see. Cause usually we have like all women groups. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Guys, don't be surprised if this week's, this first week's a little challenging. There are, you are going to have some detoxing symptoms. And I got to tell you, that was, it was a little alarming for me and it was challenging. So the more prepared you are for week one, I think the better. And no, it's normal. And normal. Mean you're doing it wrong and it will get better. It does. Just like anything, you just have to get over that hump. All right. Well, it was good. So good talking to you guys and seeing you guys. I'm so glad you were able to get on and keep us posted in the group. Check in daily. Um, there are going to be daily posts that are up. There are two posts every day. One is basically like a, the post where you can put your food, your workout, how you're feeling. Um, the other one is a post that will give you some sort of tip, recipe, something that's gut health related in there as well. So be sure to check in every day and let us know how you're doing. Cheer everybody on. And uh, I'm excited to do this. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye.